<laughs> hey guys, it's uh, Chef Will, um, and today I'm going to do somewhat of a complicated recipe, but something that everybody usually like screws up, and when you make it really well, everybody's freaked out by it. So now you need a big bowl because there are a lot of ingredients and um, it gets a little bit messy, okay? So just grab the biggest bowl you have, all right? So on the menu with Chef Will Gote, turkey meatloaf. Now you see this particular turkey, Genio, is 93% lean and 7% fat, okay? Uh, which isn't a lot. Um, and when you add the other ingredients, like the breadcrumbs and stuff, you gotta make sure that you're compensating for that fat. So um, I'll show you what I put into it. You can adjust the spices and the herbs as you want. Um, I think you should try the recipe first and then decide. All right, so we got some ketchup here. Okay, it's a quarter cup. I have a half a cup of breadcrumbs, Italian breadcrumbs. I have a half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. Here I have some canola oil. Here I have some adobo. Uh, you can use whatever you want. I'm using the Lowry's, okay, season all there. Um, this is oregano, dry oregano leaves. And this is uh, one teaspoon, half a teaspoon, excuse me. This is a quarter cup of minced onions here is black pepper and that's a uh, half a teaspoon here i have some rubbed sage remember we're doing turkey so sage works well with turkey uh here i have a teaspoon of thyme and there i have the sazon okay this is also going to add to the moisture and of course my huevos the turkey if you didn't see it on this on the packaging is three pounds now if that wasn't weird enough i'm sure some of you are going what if you don't want to use ketchup, you can use uh, barbecue sauce. All right, just remember what the flavor is going to be. Now, here is where it gets trippy. This here is unflavored gelatin. This is the science of it. Uh, you bloom the gelatin in some cold water, okay? And then you're going to add that to the mixture. Gelatin kind of hangs on to the moisture. As you know, jello, when it uh, coagulates and it gets cold, it holds on to the water. So that's going to keep the turkey moist okay that's my secret i'm sharing it with you don't tell anybody this is what the jello looks like when it blooms now, there are some veggies i'm going to use some carrots i'm going to use celery i'm going to use red and orange bell peppers they're sweeter so i think it's going to be better you, if you have a green pepper you can do that and i'm going to use some parsley okay those are going to be the vegetables that are going into it don't be lazy mince it mince them small now, do I have to remind you to wash the vegetables beforehand? Because I would imagine that you would know that already, okay? So make sure you do it with every recipe in case I don't mention it, all right? Rinse your vegetables under cold water. Now, you know how diligent I am about chopping things, but it is freaking hot today. I'm using my food processor. I got a ninja as a gift, and I'm so excited about it. I mean, you should always get the equipment that you need that's most useful that you can use for different things, okay? It doesn't make sense to get one equipment that only has, serves one purpose, all right? Notice the gloves because I'm about to get all weird and mushy-mushy on the mixture. If you've never worked the Ninja, it locks into place, okay? And I'm going to pulse it. And a few seconds later, check that out. And I didn't sweat, not even a little bit. All of this goes in there. I'd actually start calling this my rainbow meatloaf just to piss people off. We mix. It's going to be loose. You see how loose it is? The breadcrumbs are going to absorb some moisture, okay? So that you're just going to let it rest. But I'm going to form it in the pans first because then it gets a little tricky. All right. All right. Now, I filled up two mini loaf pans. These aren't as, as big as the regular loaf pans. Um, it, this mixture will mix one and a half of the regular loaf pans. So check it out. I like them smaller, they're easier to cook, they won't dry out. If I was doing a beef meatloaf, okay, and I was using, what, 83-17 or 80-20 ground beef, um, I would cook the veggies a little bit to sweat them out so that they don't have as much moisture because then it's going to make the meatloaf too wet. Are you getting the science on this? Now, if you were using a standard loaf pan, you know I'm using the smaller ones. The temperature would be 325, and the uh, the time would be 90 minutes, an hour and a half, okay? 
Check it at the hour and 15 mark with a thermometer. The internal temperature should be at least 160, okay? Because there's a carryover temperature. You want the, chick the turkey meatloaf to be at least 165, all right? Since I'm making two meatloaves, I'm gonna show you two different ways to do it. Plain, and then one smothered in some baby rays. So here you have it. Barbecue sauce, smothered turkey meatloaf, and plain turkey meatloaf, all right? When they go in the oven, you put a pan of water underneath them so that they don't dry up and crack on top. Because remember, it's it's a dry meat, right? That's why we added so much moisture. That's why we added so much moisture. So you see, I put the water in the pan, okay? And here are the meatloaves. And now, as always, we clean up. All right, let's check the temp on these. Oh, that's good. Let's see this one. Remember, 165 is what you want to hit. Um, you want to let it rest at least 20 minutes before you try cutting it or anything like that. And with meatloaf, it's actually better if you let it cool off, put it in the refrigerator and then slice it the next day. Make a meatloaf sandwich, meatloaf and eggs, that kind of stuff. Here you go. Barbecue turkey meatloaf and rainbow turkey meatloaf. So check this out. And look how moist it is. You, as you know, got to taste it. Mm. Try this recipe, folks. Chef Will Gote, turkey meatloaf, and it's not dry. Mm. Mm. If you don't make your own barbecue sauce, I like sugar rays. Make the recipe. You won't regret it.